Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. Today is another LEGO minifigure collection review video. In front of me, I've got the last of all the different types of collections that we've done for Lord of the Rings, and we've got today all of the bad guys. This is the final collection video of the Lord of the Rings series, having finished the rest of the figs and other collections, and we will be going through these guys chronologically from when they came out, what sets they are in, and how much they are worth. We've got mostly goblins and orcs here, but included are a few other non-human evil bad guys as well. If you think we left anything out from this collection, I would suggest watching the Lord of the Rings men collection because there are some bad guys there, but they're mostly human. Anyways, let's move on to the very first guy starting in 2012. These three figs are Urukai. According to some descriptions, they're also maybe half breeds with humans, but we thought they're bad enough to make the list here. They all came out in the Urukai army set, but only this guy here was exclusive to it. The dark red skin has a way of not contrasting so much with the brown body and his face in this color is already one of the most terrifying of the collection. The print shows several layers of leather armor with some metal poking through too, but as a whole, the print detailing still feels a bit simple compared to some of the other Lord of the Rings line figs. This minifig is around $7 brand new on Bricklink, and the second uruk is nearly the same. This guy also appeared in the Battle of Helm's Deep set too, yet he is a little bit more expensive because he has one of the coveted helmet molds. It's unique to these warriors, and and accurate to the movie, but they still feel a little too shiny to me. He sells for $9, and the last guy appeared in the same two sets I mentioned before, plus a polybag. His difference is the inclusion of a chest plate from an old Lego mold that's been around for a long time. His price is 11 bucks. And moving along the line of sets, at least via the number, the next one is the Mines of Moria. We jump away from the Urukai for a moment, and we land on our first orc. They were my favorite of the bad guys from the books and films, but unfortunately, they look worse than nearly all the figs from the Lord of the Rings theme. At least this guy does. I'd be inclined to like the torso print, but the contrast of no leg printing is a bit too stark and the fig feels almost incomplete. Like someone switched the real legs with the different minifig. The hair slash ear mold still looks good and the face print matches up with it quite well. He's the only fig to have this particular head mold to be done in olive green and this guy sells for nine bucks. Also from the Mines of Moria and significantly less disappointing is the Cave Troll. Technically not a minifig, but who cares? What's not to like about this big fig? The body is molded especially for him. The color of his skin works well with the pale blue and speckled gray print, and the look on the face of the cave troll is like E.T. if he went full Hulk or something, right? He comes with a brick-built club, chain on his back, and a bad attitude. This guy is the most expensive of the collection, naturally, being an exclusive big fig and all, and his final price is $30 in new condition. Also, let me jump back. I almost forgot that the Battle of Hell Deep set came out with one more Urukai, the Berserker. You may remember him from his pyrotechnic skills and the ability to eat arrows. His torso and head both have exclusive printing that show handprints on the chest and a creepy face with a bit of metal screw to the back of his head. He is $8, and here is the last of the Urukai. He appeared in the Orc Forge plus the Tower of Orthanc sets, and his only bit of uniqueness is the white hand print on the helmet. He really is only differentiated by this special accessory, but that means means a bit more for collectors because he is around 14 bucks just for that different helmet. Did I say he was the last Urukai? I mean Lertz is. He too came from the Orc Forge set. He seems to be wearing nearly no clothes. The print for the chest shows a bit more depth and the muscle definition which is the first instance of three-dimensional printing to mimic shading in this collection so far. Lertz is $9. Now back to the Orcs. This time they are Mordor Orcs. These two guys appeared in the same set as before. The first one here with the same mold as before for the head, only now with the color changed to match the skin tone. The print for the face has changed too, with an eyebrow piercing and slightly different expression. The chest print shows a large collar with teeth, and this orc is also nine bucks. The second orc is bald, appeared in a lot more sets, and is listed at five bucks. Now, I like these orcs from the Attack of the Wargs set because they feel the most complete with leg printing showing loincloths. This is usually how I imagine orcs, and it would have been nice to see these guys come in all of green. The only thing that differentiates them is the fact that one came with a quiver and the other does not. Respectively, they are five and six dollars. The third orc from this set is Yazneg, the captain, and he might take the cake for the creepiest looking fig in the collection. The flesh tone does not soften his appearance. In fact, it probably <laughs> makes it worse. The spiked collar mold that goes around his neck 
and shoulders is exclusive just to this guy, though I don't think it looks particularly great. He oddly is only $3 considering he's a relatively exclusive guy to get, and the last set from 2012 to be released was the uh, Goblin King Battle Set. You might be able to guess what we're dealing with now. Let's start with the big fig. The Goblin King has a body just like the troll and is especially molded for him, but the arms and hand molds are the same, just in different colors. The nasty, misshapen sacks under his chin were a nice touch, as are the black tooth pieces in the top of his head to make the detailing for the crown. He's got a spiked club with a skull and sells for 14 bucks. I really do like the look of this guy overall. Moving on to the Goblin Soldier number one, his distinctive features are the chains across his chest and gray hands. Overall, the goblin head mold works, and I like the inclusion of all the wrinkles and blisters for the body. He's set at eight bucks, just like the Goblin Soldier number two, but he has leather or cloth straps around his chest instead of chains, and brown hands probably look the same. Now moving on to the last guy from this set, he is a goblin scribe. Too small to work as a soldier, I'm guessing. He's got quite a big gut pants torn at the waist, and he sells for seven dollars. Now jumping up to 2013, we get nearly all orcs. First one here is from the Battle at the Black Gate set and is nearly the same as any standard guy, though now he is wearing a helmet that used to belong to an Urukai. For this, he is $10 and the next Mordor orc has a chest plate from an Urukai and sells for $7. He was from the set Pirate Ship Ambush. And let's get to some different guys. These are the first of the Gundabad orcs and I welcome the change. The flesh tone works for me, but certainly the new prints for the heavily toothed armor is what grabs me the most. One guy even has a tooth-based set of shoulder armor and they look way better with the face paint. Respectively, they are five and six dollars. And the next two Gundabad orcs appeared in the Dol Guldur battle and Merkwood army sets. They are the same as the last guys, only no head molds for the ears and hair. Respectively, they are four and five dollars. And now we have, in my opinion, the most unique fig of all, the Necromancer of Dol Guldur. I don't know how much of a physical presence this guy was within the universe, but I seriously doubt he was any part human or really a living thing. The print is quite simple in sand green, but definitely disturbing with the vacant, angry expression. He is just five bucks, and here is one of the better villains of the entire collection, Azog. Also, from the Dol Guldur battle set, he made another appearance from San Diego Comic-Con, but was not exclusive to that release, so if you ever wanted that guy, you'd end up paying a boatload for packaging. He's got a great mold to help increase the size of his shoulders, head, and chest, with some line detailing going down the front, a torn loincloth print on the legs, and all in all, a pretty darn good looking fig. Definitely the best part of him though is that graphic looking hook that is molded for his hand. He is $13, and the next fig almost doesn't count. Technically, this statue was also included in the same set. She's got some well-defined outlines to show robes and stuff. I don't really know if it really counts as a fig. Technically, four bucks. And now we are finishing the collection in 2014. First, starting with Hunter Orcs. They appeared in the attack on Lake Town and have the same flesh tone as the Mortar Orcs. They are nearly identical to the previous guys, minus the different print that makes up the face. You can see the face paint now and the expression feels a little bit more gruesome. And they have a different hair mold. It's a first time use here from these particular figs and it feels a bit more accurate to how the Orcs generally sort of have their hair styled. One comes with a quiver and the other does does not, which makes them, I guess, different. The prices are six and seven dollars respectively. And here is the second most expensive fig from the collection, Azog. Again, he appeared in the Battle of Five Armies set and his exclusive feature is the print for his face. This time, he has an open mouth that looks almost as though he is in the middle of a battle cry and his final price for this slightly exclusive print is $15. Also, this is a Gundabad orc that came out in the same set too. He is bald, which makes him different and he is four bucks. So that finishes off the last of the baddies from this entire collection. And with that, we've officially gone through not just all the figs here that are bad, from Lord of the Rings, but all of the Lord of the Rings minifigures in total. It's one of the better detailed lines of Lego figs that has ever come from any theme in my personal opinion. And check out the links in the description below if you want to see any of our other dissections or reviews of other aspects of the Lord of the Rings collection. If I was to add one more bad guy, one more thing, one more awful creature to this collection, I know it's technically not a fig, but getting a buildable fig or getting a brick built version of the Watcher in the water would be something really, really special. 
All right, that is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have another collection review video you wanna see us do in the future for any type of theme, please let us know in the comment section below. All right, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. If you enjoy our content and wanna help support the channel, you should consider heading on down to our web store, brickvault.toys. We've added a lot of really amazing custom mocks and every single purchase helps support us as well as the designers that we work with. So we're gonna be updating our web store regularly. Make sure to keep checking on back. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault.